back at you with another quick hit. This lesson is going to be called Godly Patterns, right? This lesson is going to be called Godly Patterns, right? There's good patterns and there's bad patterns, okay? Godly Patterns, this lesson is going to be called, right? And the brothers that are in this truth, our patterns are supposed to be godly patterns. Now, you can have a pattern throughout the day, and that pattern is nothing but wicked. Okay? So, we're just going to flow with the spirit. And this is the type of pattern we're talking about. Go to Titus 2. Right? But speak the things which become sound doctrine. The aged men be sober, grave, temperate, sound in faith. Grave means serious. Right? And it says, Baba Kasha, in charity, in patience, the age women likewise, that they be in behavior as become of holiness, not false accusers, not given too much wine. Right? Teach of good things, they might teach young women to be sober, love their husbands. Jump to verse 6, young men likewise exhort to be sober minded. Okay. In all things, showing thyself a good pattern. Okay, good pattern. Right? Showing thyself a pattern of good works. Pattern of good works. So when people see, and it ain't really for the masses to see, but they're going to see anyway. A pattern of good works. So they have no choice but to admit, yeah, this, this brother's doing something that's. That's for a better purpose. Right? In doctrine, showing uncorruptness, gravity, seriousness, and sincerity. So, key thing good pattern. Verse 8 sound speech that could not be condemned. Right? Cannot be condemned at all. That, that is of the contrary, my part might be ashamed having no evil thing to say of you. So, if they do say something, they. You have to make it up. Mm. They have to make that stuff up. Right? Right? Anything they do say, they have to make it up. <laughs> okay. And it says, so we went to that Baba Kasha, Baba Kasha. Right? They can't say no evil thing of you. They're going to have to make that up. You know what I'm saying? We're just gonna have to make that up there is minute. So we went to that now. Check this out. <laughs> and check this out. Let's see what else we got. Let's go to this now. This is Ecclesiastes 38. And jump straight to verse 24. The wisdom of a learned man cometh by opportunity of leisure. That word for leisure, right? When you go into leisure. It's free time. So leisure is really studying time. People think about leisure and they think about, well, leisure time and, you know, doing this, doing that. You know what I'm saying? So leisure time is really studying. That's real leisure time. It ain't playing football, basketball, playing games. Leisure time is the scriptures. That's real leisure. All right? So that's what we're supposed to be putting our leisure into. Okay, and it says Baba Kishore, check this out. Where was I, Baba Kishore? And, um, yeah, by opportunity, so you need to find an opportunity, brothers. Anytime you get the opportunity to teach, right? You teach, anytime you get the opportunity to teach, you teach, right? Waste no time, any opportunity, leisure, right? Not this rubbish you see on TV. Football, rugby. That's another form. That's exercise. That's 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 a hobby. <laughs> that's a hobby. <laughs> All right. And it says, come with my opportunity of leisure. That's why men in the ancient days, they were much more wiser. Because what they would use was their leisure time to study. All right. And it says, Baba Kishore, and he that have little business shall become wise. Everybody's so caught up on this, what's it? The rat race. 
All right. Rat race. That they don't even have time to gain any type of real wisdom. Okay. Verse 25. How can he get wisdom that holdeth the plow? And that glorieth in the gold. That driveth oxen. Right? You can't. And the gold is to prod you when you're prodding your oxen with that. Right? It's like a pitchfork. Okay. And it says, Baba Kisha, He that have little business shall become wise. And he that glorieth in the gold that driveth oxen and is occupied in their labours and whose talkers of bullocks, their work are done more overtime. And it's, the Lord doesn't care about what overtime he done for Esau. He doesn't care about them things. He cares about what are you doing for him. Right? I've experienced this, men that come into the truth, and all they can talk about is, here it is, you're on a live show, so you're doing a live show or something. All you can talk about is, oh, well, how much hours did you do? I've done, I done about 15, I've done overtime. Bro, I've witnessed this type of stuff. I'm speaking from first-hand experience. Mm? The mentality that certain men will come in with. Mm? Godly things. Occupy your time with godly things, godly patterns. So that's why I don't really fall for the tricks when people try to say, well, what's he doing? Right? He ain't doing anything, bro. I'm doing more than you could ever do in your life. Ever. What's the whole duty of man? Ecclesiastes, right? Fear the heavenly father and keep his commandments. If you ain't doing that, you ain't doing anything. And he giveth mind to his, he giveth his mind to the furrows. And he's diligent to make what's it, kin fodder for the animals. So every carpenter and workmaster that laboreth night and day, and they make cut and grave seals and are diligent to make great variety and give themselves to counterfeit imagery and to watch to finish the work. Right? And Smith also sitting by the anvil and considering the ironwork, the vapour, the fire, weight of his flesh, and he fighteth with the heat of the furnace and the noise of the hammer. The anvil was ever in his ears and he looks, his eyes look still upon the pattern of the thing that he maketh. He set of his mind to finish his work and watcheth to polish it perfectly. So doth the potter sitting at his work and turneth the world at his feet, who is carefully set at his work, maketh all his work by number. Right? But that's their duty. That's... They were created to do that. I don't believe I was put here to be... Look, I love joinery. I love joinery. I love um, dealing with woodwork and art. But that, the, the prophets, they weren't put here for that. You understand? You may be a technician or plasterer or construct, construction worker. That's good for you. That's good for you. Even when Moses, Solomon, he had men... Their whole duty, purpose was just to build things. But they were not prophets. They didn't have that same calling as Solomon or King David or Samuel or Jeremiah. See, see this is about the purpose. Knowing your purpose. And if you don't know it, you pray. Alright? Now all that other stuff is good because it's skills, right? But the Lord is concerned with what? Occupying yourself with godly things. You learn a trade. That's beautiful. You learn a trade. That's good for you. But the real trade is this word. Of a business. Because this is a business. What did Yahabashai tell his mother and father at the age of 12? When he was still in the temple. When they left him in the temple. And they still thought he was with, they, they were, he was with them. They went back to Jerusalem. You know. Worried. Thinking, Yahamashai, where have you been? Yahamashai said to Joseph, his father, don't you know I'm about my father's business? <laughs> don't you know I'm about my father's business? Who? Joseph, he didn't understand that saying straight away. Later down the line, he did. Because Joseph was Yahamashai's father, so he's thinking, about, well, he can't have another father. Who's he talking about? That's why they kept that saying in mind. He was speaking about the heavenly father. He was about his heavenly father's business. Right? <laughs> right? That's what it was about. Not, not, the business, not the business of carpentry. 
Not the business, because, yeah, we know the Messiah was a carpenter. We know that. Right? But then you have a higher calling. Peter was a fisherman. That's a matter of fisherman. I've got to tell you. Fisherman, right? Bro, that's a man's man's job. You out in them seas. Anything can happen in them seas. Right? Anything. Especially, especially the North Atlantic Sea. The Norwegian Sea. You know how heavy them, them, you know how heavy them seas are? All the wind and all that. Right? But he gave that up to follow you. Because that was his purpose. That's why Yahweh said, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Men. Right? To teach this word. Right? So if you don't know, or you're still guessing, well, why am I around? You, be you better pray to, for, for, the, for Yahweh to give you answers. Right? Godly routines. This lesson's called Godly Routines. Let's see what else we got. Like because show me just a minute. Okay, godly routines. Busy. Occupying yourself with godly things. Right? Studying as well. Timothy, study to show that stuff. Let's go to that. Godly routines. This is what builds you up. This is what matures you. Right? Because you got a lot of people. Look, you got a lot of people are 30, they're 30, 20, 40 years old. And they act like flipping children. They act like they're immature. They haven't matured. You know you could be 40 years old but still act like a child. Right? Very, very immature. This truth, it, it's, a, it's supposed to mature you as a man. Settle you. Right? And I've said that. What? Well, listen, we're gonna do another lesson later, basically, because I want to move around. I've got the the agent Smiths, you know, everywhere. I want to move around. Keep keep them busy as well. Keep them on their feet. Let's go to First Timothy's. All right. It's First Timothy's. First Timothy's. Um. Bear me just a minute, Baba Kisha, Baba Kisha. Concerning studying. <gasps> this is First Timothy's. Come on. This is First Timothy's. Concerning studying. Oh, Second Timothy's. Alright. Second Timothy's 2. And. 14 of these things put them in remembrance charging them before the Lord they strive no nope, wrong one mm. can't find it now where is it oh here it is here it is here it is yeah, that they strive not about with words right to no profit but to the subverting of the hearers verse 15 study to show thyself approved right Unto the heavenly father, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Study to show yourself approved. Because it's going to be very embarrassing if one comes up to you and you're a teacher but you don't know what you're speaking about. You don't know what you're talking about. But to subverting of hearers. Subverting in a good way. Right? So you get to convince them. You convince them. Really, it's not for us. That's for their own soul. But you understand what I'm saying. Verse 15. Study to show thyself approved unto the heavenly father, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Studying, that takes time, that takes effort, that takes leisure. Right? That needeth not to be ashamed. So you won't be ashamed because you know what you're talking about. And if you don't know what you're talking about, you will study that thing until you, you understand it. Rightly dividing the word of truth, so we have to also rightly div divide this word of truth that we are speaking as well. Okay. But shun and profane vain babblings, for they will increase unto more godliness. So make sure we're not babbling. Sometimes I, f sometimes I find myself doing that, but then I snap back right back into them scriptures. Right. See, these are all the godly things we have to do. Godly habits. Godly cycles. 
Someone could say, see, he's gone to the same place three, five times a, a day. So what? But it's still good habits. You're still bettering yourself. Okay. And that's the main thing. Okay. Let's see what else we got. Let's see what else we got. Have a good show. Mm. Bear me just a minute. Bear me just a minute. I don't want to keep this lesson too long because we've got other lessons to do as well today. It's going to be a busy one today. So we got to occupy most of the time in this truth. Okay. Godliness, man. Godly habits. Right? But also use balance as well. I want to say this as well. Go to it clear. We shut off on this one. Because there's a balance, right? You can't just be one way too much because then you there's not a balance. Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes 7. And hold on just a minute. It's Ecclesiastes 7 and 16. Be not righteous over much. Okay. Be not righteous over much. Neither make thyself over wise. Right? Why should that destroy thyself? So the scriptures talk about it. you can destroy yourself by being righteous over much. In terms of now you just don't want to do anything. You just want to study. You don't want to go out. You just want to be a hermit. You don't want to balance. Now you're looking at other brothers funny. Or your brother wants to go to a restaurant and wants to take his woman out. You, you all getting all funny. Well, take your woman out? Don't you know what we're in the last days? You know? You want to go to the bar for a drink? Okay. No, that's forbidden. Now you don't want to be in that spirit. Balance. Be not righteous over much. Right? Balance. Okay. Because you destroy yourself and you try to destroy others. Then people ain't going to want to be around you because you, you don't know how to balance yourself out. Okay. <laughs> right? You know what I'm saying? And it says Baba Kishar. Be not over much wicked. Okay. Neither... Be thou foolish. Okay. Neither be thou foolish. Balance. Mm. Balance. Okay. Why should I start die before that time? Because <laughs> if you're foolish, you're definitely going to die before your time if you're foolish. Balance everything count. I'm not saying, well, really in the times now, maybe three, two years ago and all that, Four years ago, it was different, different atmosphere. You may have went out, went to pubs with the brothers and all that. After you've you took camping, done different things and all that. Every brother has his different walk. So I'm not going to say, brother, don't do that. But really, in the times we're in now, you really want to be more focused on the Lord. And if you are going to go out, just a couple hours. And that's it, and get back in where you need to get in because really, we're in, we're in evil times now. You see what these perps be doing? You got people walking around with briefcases, doing all types of madness, briefcases, and trying to trying to get souls over to the win souls over to the dark side. But there's still a balance. Apply that balance, okay? Key within the we apply that balance. So with this, I'm gonna shut off. I'm gonna move to my next spot. Lower in this was edifying. And to the next one, shadow on.